Hi everyone, Gemma here. Thanks for watching today. In this video, I'm going to be making a 5x7 flip and see card using Made to Surprise products. If you're new to the channel, I'm the design team member for Made to Surprise, which is designed by Sam Calcott. I'm just preparing for this month's launch and I thought I'd make one of the cards with you. To view the collection in more detail, I'll link the video just here in the top right hand corner um, and it shows all the products in more detail. So today I'll be using the Tops and Tails Stamp and Die Set, the Farmyard Sentiments A5 Stamp Set, the Barn Door Stamp and Die Set and the 5x7 Mechanism Die for the Flip and See. So I've gone ahead and prepared lots of my items. So I have a card blank here, which is five by seven. It's a shop bought one, so it comes in slightly shorter than that. Um, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. I've then cut a matte panel, which measures four and three quarters by six and three quarters to go over the top there. These are the mechanism dies. So I've cut this piece here once in white cardstock, which will go over the top there. Just take this out so you can see it better. So you've got this large frame with two score panels in the center. And I cut that in craft cardstock and just reinforced the score lines and folded and burnished for that piece. So this will be our pull mechanism. So it'll slot through here, like so. And then you pull this aside to make the mechanism work. I've then cut this piece in craft cardstock and I've also cut it again in brown cardstock and I've paper pieced it together to create this. I have chopped it in half because I'm just going to have the top of the door opening. So I've just trimmed it just above this panel here and I've attached some gold pearls to give that uh, metal hardware look. So hopefully you can see that okay. So that will sit on the front there, like so. Then for the inside of the door, I've cut this panel using this die in craft cardstock. And because I'm making some alterations, I've just trimmed a piece of white cardstock that will sit in the top here. So when you open the door, you'll be able to see that panel there. Hopefully it's making sense. Um, you'll be able to see it more now as we construct it. I'm just giving you an idea of, of where I'm going in the process. So I've stamped a sentiment, hey, have a fabulous birthday. That's gonna go on the front with this horse image there. And then to go on the inside, so when the door opens like so, there'll be this horse and then I'm going to heat emboss happy birthday over the top. So there's a hidden message inside. So we'll start assembling everything together. So I'm just attaching my matte piece to the white card blank. Just placing that in the center there. Pop that to one side. So I've got my slot piece, so it's got the slot there in the center. This curved edge is where you'll be pulling the mechanism from. So you can change the orientation on your card. You can have it pulling from the top, from the right hand side, left hand side, even the bottom. It's entirely up to you. But for today's card, I'm pulling it from the right hand side. I've got my largest piece here with the two score lines in the center as i said i've reinforced those and just fold and burnish along the score lines like so 
So this rectangle piece here between the two score lines is what will pull the mechanism. So this will be fixed. This will be fixed in place and we will be pulling this back and forth and this is what will make the, the card flip. So I'm going to attach some red tape along here. If I can find the end, there we are. You can use liquid glue if you wish, but if you apply it too heavily, it might, might ooze out and then it might interfere with the mechanism. So that's why I'm using the red tape. So once that's attached, I'm going to slot this through this piece here, like so. And you want to line this up, so we're sort of in the centre there, so you've got a gap here, and you don't see any of this piece inside, you only see this larger piece. So once you're happy with your placement, you want to take some liquid glue and hold this in place best as you can, like so, and just run a bead of glue along the shorter piece of cardstock. So I'll show you that there, like so. So I'm just gonna line that back up. Make sure that's in the center. Happy with that. And I'm gonna place that down. Like so. So when you pull this, that inner piece just moves there, like so. Next, I'm going to take the smaller panel that sits on the inside and attach that. So I'm just going to add some quick grab glue just along the edges here. And a bit of collal to help strengthen. So I'm lining that up with the scored line. You don't want it to sort of go over because again it might interfere with the mechanism. So just place that down like so. And the mechanism is now held in place and can be pulled in and out. So I've just realised I've added red tape along the whole panel. That's if you're doing one piece. Um, you just need it for the top side because the bottom side won't move. So I'm just going to peel that off if I can. You won't see any of this. But I'm just going to gently peel that away. To about there. So that's sufficient for that. So I'm just having a look at the alignment for both of the pieces. So there will be an overhang because there's a bit of a slot there and that's to hide that. So I'm just going to place that there and press that down. So that will move open and closed like so. So this piece I want to butt up to the door so it looks like one whole piece but I don't want to attach anything to this piece here because if I pull it then it'll move. So I'm only attaching glue 
to this area here because that will stay in place. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I just run glue all along there, you can see I'm avoiding this area there. I'm going to line it up like so. Place that down. And just the one side opens. Lovely. So I'm just going to attach my little arrow to the craft card. So it shows the recipient what they need to do. And I've cut that in the blue that matches the matte layer. Like so. So there's my arrow attached. There's this sort of semi oval shape here. That's for your finger pull. So if you want to um, cut that into your card, I do that now. So I place this panel over the top as a guide and cut through both layers of cardstock if you can. So tack that in place, run it through your die cutting machine. Um, it may not go through both pieces, but you should cut the first layer and then emboss the second layer so you know where to line it up. But on this occasion, I'm not going to use that die. There'll still be enough room to pull that like so. So I'm just going to take some foam strips. I'm going to pop these around the side. So I'm avoiding this craft card piece as this needs to move in and out. But any of the white area is fine to attach the foam. So I'm just going to pop the horse up onto some foam and place that on my card. So when you're placing the sentiment, you need to be mindful that there's no glue on this side here otherwise it'll stop the mechanism from moving so the last thing i want to do to finish it off i'm just going to open this out like so so i've got my white panel to go there the horse is just going to sit there like so and i'm going to heat emboss happy birthday there so I'll just go ahead and do that now. So I've taken the llama stamp, the llama wish you a happy birthday, and I've trimmed it down so I've just got the happy birthday. I'm just going to line that up at the top and in the center. Let's just check I'm happy with that. It's not quite straight, so I'll just do that again. I'm just going to prep my surface so I've got anti static powder. I'm just going to rub that over, remove any oils that may be there. I'm going to use Versamark watermark stamp pad. I'm just going to stamp that off a few times so I get a good impression. So I think I'm happy with that. I've got the Wow Metallic Gold Rich Regular Embossing Powder. Just pop that over the top there. So if you've got any unwanted embossing powder in places that it shouldn't be, you can just take a dry paint brush, like so. Just sweep that off if you need to. But I think I've got a good impression there. So I'm going to preheat my tool for about 40 seconds, make sure it's nice and hot, and then place it over my card. So if you preheat it, um, 
there's less chance of warping your cardstock. So there's my sentiment now complete. So I'm going to attach that on the panel here. There's the final card. Such a fun style. I really like it. So cool. Let me know what you think. It's a, a really fun collection and great for any occasion, any age, especially those that like interactive cards. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, you might want to hit the like button, leave a comment or consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Any products used in today's video will be listed in the description box below. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!